Hello and welcome to Sue Finley Designs. Today we're, the video is on the piece that you see behind me. Um, it's a very quick and easy and very uncomplicated piece. For this one I decided to blow the resin and see what kind of results I got. I also mixed in with the resin some of the mineral spirits that I've used on some of the previous videos to see if I could achieve any cells and things using the blowing method with the mineral spirits. So in with the resin today the colours I've used is, uh, where are we, Colour Obsession black, black Currant which is quite nice, it looks quite dark on, in the resin until you move it in with the white and things, so that's quite nice. Um, the white is a Colour Obsession where are we? Snow White, which is a paste. The other one's a paste as well, so that's a paste that we use today. I also, I don't have any magenta or pinks in the pigment or pastes at the moment, so that's on my um, list of things to purchase when I buy some more resin. But I do have a Bombay ink in magenta, which I used. But because when you add a few drops of this to resin, it does become quite translucent um, so to densen it up a little bit and also add a little bit of metallic to it I also added some pearl X powder in flamingo pink now I've got some little tester sample pots of those so I used some of that in with the magenta just to give it a bit more oomph if you like so yeah that's basically it so we just pour the resin blow it about a bit and then once it's cured for half an hour I drag a stick through it to add the elements that I want to add in there and as always some stones were added at the end for a little bit of extra dimension and texture so um, without further ado let's get on with this week's tutorial so here I'm using a round cradle board that I previously primed ready to go I primed it in white because I knew that this was going to be a white background and in the past I have poured resin straight onto an unprimed board but because I knew this was going to be white I wanted to have a white background so that it meant that the pigment was not having to work so hard to cover it. So all I'm doing now is just spreading the base layer of white on. Um, I'm not worrying too much about it being perfect at this stage because I'm going to be pouring more colours on top. So the centre centre of the board doesn't need to be perfect. Now apologies for the um, focus of the camera going in and out. Because I'm moving around and the board is white, it, the camera doesn't know what to focus on. So I hope that doesn't distract you too much. But once we start pouring the colour, that should settle down. So here I'm just pouring the colour in the centre because I want an, a white negative space on the out, outer edges so I'm concentrating the colour in the middle. With hindsight maybe I shouldn't have poured the colours on top of each other but that's, that's the beauty of experimenting, you see ways that you can improve next time. Now as I mentioned I mixed some mineral spirits in with the resin when I was mixing the colour and you can see here that the colour is starting to create cells already on the pink. Now I didn't use the, the nozzle on the spray bottle when I added the mineral spirits, I just actually tipped some in there. I didn't measure it or anything and actually at one point I thought maybe I'd put in a bit too much because the resin started looking a little bit funny when I was mixing it but I thought you know what what the hell let's go for it that's the beauty of experimenting is that we can see what works and what doesn't but so far I'm actually liking how that is separating now I initially had the nozzle on my hair dryer on because I thought that that would control the flow more but I didn't like how it was moving so I took it off and I'm just using the angle of the, the dryer to blow it in the direction that I want I'm trying not to muddy the colours too much so I'm trying to stick with blowing individual areas of colour because I don't want it to become a muddy mess as it's blowing around so I'm just going to move around and, and move it as best I can and try and group the colours together but also I do want it to blend because I do want the colours to fall on top of each other to try and form some cells. 
I normally don't like to use a hairdryer to move the resin. I normally like to use my fingers because I can control more how things move and things. But because for this one, I wanted it to have a different feel and a different look. So the hairdryer, I thought, well, it, it can create unpredictable results. So hence why I've done it. Now here I've just added a bit more white because I felt it was a bit lacking in that area. It just needed a little something. So just a bit of white. And as I'm going around, I'm using the hairdryer to not only blow the resin around, but also helps to pop some of the bubbles. So I don't really need to use my heat gun as much on this piece. Now you might be like me where you will go and blow things around and, and work it and work it and work it until in the end you've actually overworked it. So sometimes you have to stand back and go you know what enough is enough and know when to stop. Sometimes I find that difficult to do like so here I'm, I'm still working away and thankfully the results did pay off and it didn't I didn't overwork it but I did worry at one point that I was overworking this piece so now I'm just making sure that the edges are nice and tidy making sure that the resins poured over the edge Now the great thing with these round cradle boards is they've got a beveled edge so the resin flows over the side quite nicely Now you could leave your piece as it is at the moment, like it is, because I think that's quite effective. But I wanted to add in um, a little bit more depth and dimension to the piece. So using the edge of the stair stick that I used for the purple, I'm just dragging the resin through. Now I'd left it for about 15 minutes before doing this, just so that the, the white and the purple doesn't run together and we don't then lose the lines if you know what I mean so um so we're leaving it 15 minutes not too long just enough for it to not be moving enough but still pliable that I was able to then create these extra lines through the resin and again it's one of those things is knowing when enough is enough and when to stop so what I do is I take a little step back just to see if there's anything missing but I look at it from all angles just to see if any areas need a little something extra so I try not to overwork it because you know you end up with a muddy mess if you do that so I left this for an hour to make sure that the resin had cured quite a bit and was no longer moving and another reason why I left it for that time is I was undecided on where I was going to place the stones so after pondering over that I decided that it was only going to have a few stones not too many and they were going to follow the shape of the resin so as you can see I'm just picking out small areas to highlight and to show off certain areas of the resin and one thing I like about the stones is that when the piece is hanging on the wall the depending on where your lights are or whether at what time of the day it is you get different looks at different times of the day and you get light bouncing off the stones and off the resin so it looks like a different piece at different times of the day so that's one of the reasons why I like to add stones to the piece and not only does it add dimension and texture but it also gives it a bit of sparkle it just makes it a little bit different from all the other pieces that are out there in the market at the moment as always, I hope you enjoyed this very quick and simple video and I hope it inspires you to get creative. If you would like to see more of my videos, please join me on Patreon where for as little as $4 per month you can see this and all my other exclusive videos in the comfort of your own home. You will find a link to the materials and things that I've used in this video and you will also find links to my Instagram, Facebook page and Facebook group. So if you'd like to come and join us on any of those pages please see the description below. Once again thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it and that is giving you inspiration for your next piece. So until next time, speak to you soon. Bye now.